Please give it up for Aaron Templer. Thanks, Jared. Hi, everybody. I'm Aaron Templer. I'm a guy. I'm white. I'm a white guy. And I'm constantly amazed at the good things that happen to me because of this one single uh, fact about my life. And here's a couple of examples. Uh, I get to fuck up in ways, and it's rewarded. Check this out. They asked 60 law partners to take part in a writing analysis study. It was fake. The partners didn't know it. They were given legal writings with a bunch of intentional errors in it. Half of the partners were told that the writer was white, and half were told that he was black. Same name, same credentials. When they thought they were dealing with a me, 4.1 out of 5. Shows potential. Good hire. When they thought they were dealing with the black guy, 3.1 out of 5. Marginal at best. Not a good hire. So I'm rewarded for fucking up. It's amazing. It happens to me all the time. And lately, I don't know if you've noticed this, I'm actually encouraged to fuck up, which I think is a really remarkable thing. Um, you know, if we've learned anything from the Seth Godins of the world, it's that we are not fuck-ups, right? We're innovators, which is awesome. I figure if I fuck up anymore, I'm going to be a thought leader. So I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> Another good thing that happens to me a lot is that I get to define me for me. Uh, there's no preconceived notions that I have to, like, undo when I'm getting to work with people, right? There's no role or sort of expectation that, that they're expecting me to play. We get to work right away without having to undo any of that stuff. It's like I'm writing my own Wikipedia page or creating my own Google search results all the time. It's like a head start, really, because we're off to the races without having to undo any kind of preconceived notions about roles. It's amazing. It's a good thing that happened to me. And these are just a couple of things. This shit has been going on with my people for a long time, after generations. We've been basking in, you know, affordable health care and equal pay and equal housing for an awful long time. It's really created quite a, a little bit of momentum for us. And, you know, the only trade-off that I can discern from all this basking is that we just need a little bit more sunscreen when we bask. That's a small price to pay, I think. I think we now know what Thomas Jefferson or who Thomas Jefferson had in mind when he said that all men are created equal. He had me in mind. These are the kind of rules that have been sort of laid out for me. And I feel like I'm kind of holding serve all the time. I'm just sort of in control. I can get to be a little bit more proactive and less reactive. It's not that I don't deserve what happens to me. And, and yes, I work hard and I deserve everything that I get. But I just feel like I can be a little bit more aggressive. You know what I mean? I can be that John McEnroe assertive and not have to worry about being, you know, Richard Sherman thuggy or, you know, uh, ungrateful for all the things that have happened to me. I can be passionate and excited and continue to want more. So let me talk to just the white people for a second, which looks like is kind of what I've been doing already. Um, three things. One, the first thing I want to tell you is chai means tea. I don't care what Oprah tells you, enough with the chai tea. The second thing is that you get up in order to get down, really not that complicated. The third thing is uh, we cannot solve our problems with the same minds that created them. This is what diversity to me is all about. It's not some sort of moral issue. It's about finding creative solutions and welcoming more ideas at the table. You want to solve some of these problems, we need a big fat pile of diverse ideas. So let's get more people at the table. So I've been trying to think about this. How do I move from kind of being cool with this to where I can be active about this to, again, make more room at the table for more uh, voices so that we can all move forward? I've come up with two things that I want to throw uh, at you. The first one is... I can speak up. I can call out the stupid racist jokes and the stupid accents that are being made fun of without being sort of accused of having an agenda or playing a race card. That's sort of what this privilege or advantage or whatever you want to call it is all about. The second thing I can do is I can ask. I can just ask. That's all you got to do. I helped create an apps challenge for Colorado not too long ago. We, re we recruited 20 judges all across the state out of five cities. Half of them were women. And we were able to actually get a majority to judge the finals. So all this hand-wringing in the tech community about um, lack of women involvement, how did we do it? We fucking asked. It wasn't some sort of out-of-the-box solution. We just asked. They're out there, and it's amazing. This asking, by the way, extends to names that we can't pronounce. I'm convinced sometimes we see names like this and we freak out and we don't want to make an idiot of ourselves by asking these people to get involved. But if you can kind of overcome this and, you know, uh, get your mind uh, away from, from what you're thinking it is and, uh, and not onto the next one that you want to invite, you'll find, especially with this person, you'll get about 20 years of legal experience, an incredible networker who adds value in ways that's really remarkable, someone who has a work-life balance and, and a story to share about self-employedness and self-employedness and, and entrepreneurship. And if you're me and you ask, you get married. So very good things can happen. Don't be afraid of the names that are difficult to pronounce. Really good things can happen. 
like free legal advice for life. I, enduring, enduring love for life, enduring love for life. So speak up, ask. I figure there are two pretty simple things that I can do uh, to kind of give back for some of uh, all this good stuff that happens to me all the time. Thanks a lot.